Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve lucky numbers in a matrix. I actually really like this problem because I get to show off some of my math skills again and I'm actually going to show you two solutions. So the first solution is going to be relatively not crazy. I mean, I guess for an easy problem, maybe it's a little challenging. It's going to, of course, given like a matrix like this of N by M dimensions, at the very least, you can expect that you're going to have to at least iterate over the entire matrix. So the solutions time complexity is going to be this. The space complexity is going to be n plus m. Now the second solution is going to be a lot more interesting and you can guess which of those two we're going to optimize. We can't really optimize the time complexity so we're actually going to get the same time complexity but the space complexity is going to get down to constant. And I'll kind of walk you through my exact thought process for that but let's just get into the question first of all. We're given a matrix that could look something like this. I guess uh, in this example, we actually don't need the bottom row. But the idea is we want to sort of identify lucky numbers. A lucky number by definition has to be the minimum number in the row. So if this is the minimum in the row, there's no way any of these numbers could be lucky. This is the minimum in the second row, there's no way any of these could be lucky. And this is the minimum in the third row, there's no way any of those could be lucky. Now at the same time, the number must also be the maximum in the column. So looking at the original column, I mean, I crossed these numbers out, but we do need to at least look at them to see that this is greater than all of them, which clearly it's not. Three is not larger than 10 or 16. So it's not a lucky number. I'm gonna cross this one out as well. So just to make it a little more clear like this. What about this one? One, is it the largest in the column? No. So again, cross it out. Lastly, is this the largest in the column? So this is the only lucky number in this matrix. And so we are returning all the lucky numbers in the form of a list. It's a little bit misleading and I'll get into that. That's a bit of a hint, I guess, but uh, sorry. <laughs> so we'll return 15 in the form of a list. That's the solution for this problem. Now, how exactly could we have coded up a solution like that? Well, not too differently than I presented it. The first phase of the algorithm would be get the row minimums. And I'm going to actually do them in the form of a hash set. So if we collect all the row minimums in the form of a hash set, the problem becomes not too difficult because if we have all of them, so in this example, it's gonna be something like one, three, 15. These are the row minimums. Now getting the column maximums is gonna be a bit more tricky, but we can kind of follow the same process. So let's kind of do that as well. I'll circle those in green. This is a column max, this is a column max, this is a column max, and this is a column max. This time they're all on the same row, but you know, it didn't have to be like that. But anyways, these are the column maxes, 15, 16, 17, and 12. At this point, the fact that I drew this out can you tell me what the solution would be or maybe how you could code it up or maybe even why did I say I'm going to collect these in a hash set because now we can easily find the intersection if I have two circles these are the uh, column maxes this is not a butt cheek by the way I'm sorry if it looks like that these are the column maxes these are the row minimums I just want that sweet sweet middle because that's the intersection those are the numbers that are the minimum in the row and maximum in the column. And in this case, in terms of coding it, it could be pretty easy. You just iterate over one of them and just check, is one in this? Nope, it's not. So this is not it. Is three in that? Nope. 15 is the only one that belongs to both of them. So 15 is the result. This is n times m space, n plus m or sorry, n times m time and n plus m space, but I'm actually gonna show you a little trick. You can actually optimize the space a bit to get it down to the max of n m. So I always like to get the dimensions of a matrix just to make my code a little bit readable. So we'll do that like this. And I'm gonna have the result, which is gonna be a list, and we're gonna return that list, but not before we actually add some values to it. So first I'm gonna have a hash set for row minimum and then I'm gonna find the minimum in each row. Believe it or not, you don't need a nested for loop in Python to do that. 
but the time complexity isn't going to be improved. Basically, I'm just saying that from a given row, we can get the row like this matrix at this row, and then we can get the minimum from it just by calling the minimum function on this array. And then we can append or add that rather to the hash set that we have up above. So that's phase one. Phase two is going to be collecting the column maxes also in a hash set. That's going to require nested loops just because the way a matrix is kind of structured in code. We can't really get an entire column. So we have to do this column in range columns. I'm going to declare the current max as the value at the beginning of this column. So I'm going to say the column is like this, and I want the value at index zero. We could have picked any value. It doesn't really matter. But I know that zero is always going to be a valid index. So now for R in range rows, we're going to basically just try to maximize this. So I'm actually going to copy and paste it. It's going to be pretty similar. I'm going to take the max here of current max as well as the value that we're currently looking at so replace this zero with an r and then we're good and at the end don't forget once you actually compute that max in this particular column make sure to add it to that hash set do this dot add the current max the last phase is relatively simple. We just go through a number in either the row min or column max, every number in that. So I'm going to do row min. And if this number is in the column max as well, it's part of the intersection. We can append it to the result just like this. And that's the entire code. I'll run it. You can see it's accepted. And even the memory is actually pretty efficient, but I'm going to show you a small little optimization. Why did we need to add this element? to a hash set. Could we not have just asked the question if it's a part of the intersection, like down here? Just so you know, this will work. If I swap this here and then I put row min down here, this will also work. So every time we have a number that happens to be a column max, why not just ask the question if current max is in row minimum set if it is then append it to the result like this and then we don't need this bottom one and we also don't need the column max hash set so just a small little optimization doesn't really improve it much but you can see uh, that this solution does also work this time i mean leco give us less memory okay whatever it doesn't really matter but we can actually improve this further and the idea i'm going to use is once again the idea that you always use when trying to implement a greedy solution. I'm going to show you why the solution works with a math technique called proof by contradiction. First, allow me to explain something. When I first actually read the problem description, I thought it was asking us to find the max in each row and the max in each column. That's what I thought. And then I, I tried to think, well, how many solutions could there possibly be? Because if I find a max here in a column, like if I found a max in this a row, for example, then I'm eliminating everything else because only the element that's a max in the row could be a lucky number. And also if it's the max in the column, then I'm eliminating all of these. So at most, you can imagine something like this where, okay, let's say just hypothetically, if this was the max, then we'd have something that looks like this and then cross these out as well. And then the only two elements remaining are here. So either of them could be the max. This time it's this one. And then we would cross out everything in the row and everything in the column. If we were looking for maxes, it would be limited based on the dimensions of the grid, whichever one of these is smaller. This time it's three. So you could only have up to this many lucky numbers. But actually, our problem is a little bit different. We're looking for the min in each row and the max in each column. First, I want to mention that every number in the grid is going to be distinct. I should have probably mentioned that earlier, but that's kind of why we're not going to run into like the duplicate case where there's multiple elements that are like the max in a column or minimum in the row. Second, consider this. We have in this example a number 12, which is the minimum in the row. So of course, none of these are going to be lucky. And it's also the max in the column. None of these are going to be lucky either. But let me take some notes. These three numbers are greater than 12. This is the note I'm making. So these three numbers are greater than 12. These two numbers are less than 12. They have to be, right? So for any number in this remaining region, to be lucky, 
they have to be greater than 12 because all of these numbers are greater than 12. And if these numbers want to be lucky, they have to be great, like the greatest element in the column. So these numbers have to be greater than 12. But they also have to be the minimum in the row. And these numbers in the same row as them are less than 12. So they have to be even smaller than those numbers. So how can these numbers be simultaneously greater than 12 and less than 12? This is a contradiction. So therefore, if we have a lucky number, there cannot possibly be more than one lucky number. At this point, we actually know enough to solve the problem in constant space. I want to take it a small step further and prove to you that there doesn't have to be exactly one lucky number. There could actually be zero lucky numbers given a matrix because consider this example here. There's only going to be one minimum in each row. We've identified them, but this number is not the maximum in the column. Neither is this one, but this one is because every value in the column is actually less than 12, but it didn't have to be that way. All we have to do is think of one counter example and we prove that there doesn't have to be a solution. So if I change this to 22 and I change this to 27, this is still the minimum in the row. This is still the minimum in the row. And this is still the minimum in the row, but this is not the max in the column. Neither is this. And now neither is this the max in the column. So we've eliminated everything. There is no result for this problem. And it kind of hinges on the fact that every number in the matrix is going to be distinct. Sorry, I probably should have mentioned that at the beginning, but I do think the problem description mentioned it. So I just want to show you this counterexample because none of the examples in the problem description show you that actually there doesn't have to be a result. Now, lastly, let me prove how we can find the lucky element and how we can do it with a constant space. So it all hinges on the fact that if we've identified the minimum in each row among those three, it's actually impossible for the smaller ones to be the lucky element. Only the max of the three could possibly be a lucky element. And it's possible that even the max might not be a lucky element for reasons I talked about just a second ago. Now, why is that? The logic is pretty similar. Consider this. If this element is the minimum element in the row, but in the next row, there's a minimum element that's greater than this one. If this is the minimum element in the row, we know that one is less than three. We also know that three is less than every other element in the row. In this case, nine, eight, seven. I'm really sorry if you can't read this. I'll write it over here. We've shown this, right? Three is less than all of these. So at least one of these elements is going to be in the same column as one. It could also even be this element. This element could have been in the same column as one as well. But for one to be lucky, it has to be greater than all of these, which is obviously not true given this inequality. So basically, we ruled out one. We can use a similar process to rule out three. If 12 is the minimum in the row, there must be at least one element with the same column as three that's greater than three. So three can't possibly be the max in the column. Therefore, only the max of all these minimums could be the result. So the algorithm is going to be this. Identify the minimum in a row. Identify the minimum in the next row and keep track of the maximums of all of these. So right now we'd say, okay, three is the max, get rid of this. And then in the next row, we'd say, okay, 12 is the max of the minimums we've seen so far. So this is the only one we keep track of. There are many ways to code up the remaining. You could just go through every element in that column. It might actually be more annoying to code that up. So another thing you could do is just you know iterate over the grid once more, find the max in each uh, column. And if we found the max in a given column and it's the same number, Number as the lucky or the you know the previous number we identified then we found the result we'd return immediately otherwise we'd you know keep continuing if we never find that result then we just return an empty array at the end so that's how we can get it down to constant space let me code it up starting with a little bit of boilerplate i'm going to do this i'm going to maintain the max of the row mins that's the kind of special number i was talking about since we're trying to maximize it i'm initially going to set it to float negative infinity just a really small number 
So what we're doing is remember, first find the minimum in every single row, kind of like we did before. I'll call it the row min. But we want the max among all of the row minimums. So we can set max of row mins and set it to the max of the one that we just found as well as itself. So after that, we'll have what we want and then we'll start going through the columns. So I'm gonna do it like this for column in range columns and I'm gonna keep track of the column max. So I'm just gonna take an arbitrary element from the current column, I'll pick index zero just because it's easy and it's guaranteed to exist. Next, we're gonna go through every row in that particular column and we're gonna try to find the column max. So maximizing the column max as well as the matrix at row and column. Now, after that, we will say that if the column max is equal to the number we saw earlier, then we found the solution. It's the number that's the max in the column and the minimum in the row. So go ahead and return it. I'm gonna do this one because it's shorter. I mean, they're the same value, but this one, obviously it's a shorter variable name. So at that point we return. It's not guaranteed that this is gonna execute. So make sure to have a return statement down here. I think leak code will actually pass it even if you don't have this in Python because they do some weird type conversions or whatever. But I think it's you know smart to have this. Let's run it. Okay, I had a typo, really sorry. Don't know why I put columns here. I'll call it rows, try it again. Okay, now you can see it does work and it's efficient. These runtimes are pretty random though. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Launched Python for coding interviews a couple days ago and I'm really looking forward to the stuff I'm gonna launch next. It's gonna be even more exciting.